shops like this, the local butchers and the local bakers are still extremely popular. Whereas in the UK, they tend to have been swallowed up by the big supermarkets and the big hypermarkets. And the reason I'm out here this morning is because today's topic is all about shopping. Great, what you like and don't like about shopping. We're going to be looking at useful language, vocabulary and expressions you might need to talk confidently on that subject. Brilliant. All I need to do now is make sure I can get back to the office before the music stops. See you in a mo. That's a great expression, by the way. See you in a mo. A mo? A moment. See you in a mo. Ha ha! And here I am, <laughs> as if by magic. Good morning. It's Thursday. Welcome. Nice to see you all. Um, very excited to be here. And today, yes, well, what are we going to do today? What are we going to do today? This is what we're going to do today. We're going to look at the topic of shopping. Fantastic. <laughs> Try that again. <sighs> Shopping. We're going to be looking at essential vocabulary, right? Things like um, synonyms for cheap, synonyms for expensive, right? Lots of interesting stuff. And today, something special I've not done before is today I've got a guest coming onto the show. Who is it? Well, the rumour mill has started moving and rumour has it some of you know who it is. And maybe you do. It's a chap or a guy from Ireland, um, and we're going to speak to him later. We're going to have a conversation on the topic of shopping, and uh, we're going to sh highlight highlight some interesting vocabulary for you, so you can find out you know interesting language from our conversation. Let's see how that goes. Um, also today we'll be looking at some idioms, of course. For example, do you know the idiom to talk shop? to talk shop. I wonder what that means. Well, you're going to find out a little bit later today. And also, we'll be doing, of course, the regular sample answers or model answers that we always do. And finally, end up with Kahoot, our lovely game to do some vocabulary review and things like that. Nice. So first of all, then, let me check out where you all are. Who is in the house? Who is here today? Let's have a look. We've got La Reina Victoria. <laughs> Hello, Alexi. Good morning, Suraj. Nice to see you. Francesca and Maureen. Facebook users, I apologise. I can't always see your name, so I don't know who's in there. From Turkey, Inji Lensi. Nice to see you. Arman, hello. Um, Tanja Klein, I'm excited to find out who our guest will be. Yeah, well, it's, of course, our guest, not just my guest. He's, all of us are hosting him today. Um, who else is here? Sabina Yasmin, hello. Nice to see you. Amanpreet, fantastic. Cheyenne, nice to see you as well. And Azask, Azask, Azask from Uzbekistan. There's a lot of zzzzs there. Very nice to see you. Uh, Dimeji from Nigeria. Nice to see you as well. And uh, Naduni from India. Brilliant. People from all around the world. Good to see you. Guys, do remember, if you are on YouTube, do subscribe so you can find out about, well, no, turn on the notifications to find out about new upcoming videos. Um, I do have a video this Saturday. And actually, it's on a similar topic. It's going to be a complete model answer analysis of one of the cue cards um, around, well, around what? Around shopping, buying things, expensive things, right? You'll find out all about that on Saturday. Good. And just to let you know that the um, my website, Keith Speaking Academy, is where I put all the notes from the show um, today. These notes are going to go up tomorrow. They normally come up this afternoon, 
but I've not been able to get online yesterday and I'll be out this afternoon. So it's probably going to go up tomorrow. And just let me show you where that is, right? Um, curiosity. That's interesting. Curiosity. Curiosity killed the cat. If you go to the KeithSpeakingAcademy.com um, and you will see in the menu free live lessons, if you go there tomorrow, you can go today if you want, but if you go tomorrow, you'll get the latest PDFs. So all the PDFs are here to download um, as well. If you want to leave a donation to help me with my work, um, then that's always very welcome. You can get the latest ones from Jobs last week. Um, you can download PDF or you can just click and read the lesson. You know, if you're more interested in getting the lesson straight away on your mobile phone, then you can go, just go straight in and access the lesson uh, here, right? Great. And we've got these, which are really nice. I'm doing more and more of these. These are practice tests, mock tests, right? So that means if you want to be at like a mock test where you imagine you're in the class, then Hello. you can just watch these this videos. This is the IELTS speaking test held today. Uh, my name is Keith. Um, can you tell me your full name, please? My name okay, is Keith. and what can I call you? <laughs> right. And so that is actually like it's a mock test. It goes on for a whole 14 minutes. Um, and that one is on the topic questions about jobs and work. So it's great practice, right? That's the, the one about jobs. Talk fluently about jobs. There are lots of these pages on the website. Um, so go and check them out. Just go and have a look at the uh, free live lessons and everything Everything is there. Free live lessons for you. Okay, up there. Nice. Lovely. Good. Let me turn that off. <laughs> okay, so let's get back to this um, today's topic. Um, we're doing, well, we're talking all about, what are we talking all about? Shopping, right? Shopping. Just before we begin, give me a moment because I'd like to just do a quick shout out I do get quite a few emails and I got a lovely email from Abu the other day and Abu said to me, hi Keith, I hope you're well. I'm very excited to let you know I've got 7.5 in speaking last week. I've tried many coaching for IELTS exams in the past, but your teaching is the best. Ah, oh, my score jumped from 6.5 to 7.5 after watching and learning from your tutorials. I'll be eternally grateful to you. May Allah bless you. Thank you so much. Regards, Abu. Abu, that is a pleasure. That makes me so happy. It makes me feel that's why I get out of bed in the morning, um, to get nice emails like that, to find out about how people have, you know, done well on the IELTS speaking test, um, thanks to the, the videos and tutorials and courses. So that's great. Thank you very much, Abu, for letting me know. Good. Great. <laughs> right. Yes, I'm just checking on your comments here. Some interesting stuff here. Have you checked out about learning English in shorts? New trends on YouTube. Yep, absolutely. There's a lot of nice stuff there out there. But we're going to go straight in. We're going to go straight in. Just if you're joining us, right, the today's, today's topic is shopping. And we're going to begin today with essential vocabulary. Okay, so essential vocabulary. Let me show you here. Um, I'm going to begin talking about to buy, right? When we shop, we buy things. Um, to buy is the normal verb. More formally, you can say purchase, and you can say purchase in the speaking exam. That's fine. Um, it is a little bit more formal. Uh, we also say informally to pick up. I went to the shops to pick up some um, some food items or I went to the shop to pick up some meat, to pick up some vegetables. I need to pick up some fruit, right? It's informal. It means literally pick up or to collect, but it means in context to pick up, to, to, to buy something. So if you're talking about supermarkets and shops, you can use pick up to mean to buy. I think really important words for cheap and expensive, right? When we go shopping, it's all about price, 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 right? As uh, Jesse J told us, it's all about the price tag. 
and I'm not going to sing as much as I would like to. Um, so cheap, we can say inexpensive, right? Which is nice. Notice we can use um, what we call prefixes like in, un, an, dis, prefixes to make a negative. So obviously expensive means it costs a lot of money. The opposite, inexpensive. We can talk about low priced goods, right? Low priced um, goods, low priced food. We can talk about affordable, right? Affordable goods, affordable clothes. Um, if it's affordable, you have enough money, therefore it might be cheap or cheap enough. So affordable, it's not an exact synonym of cheap. It's not exactly the same, but more or less, it does mean it's cheap and you have enough money to buy it, right? affordable great expensive is the opposite obviously um we often use the word dear especially in british english right um well the, the this this fish was so dear all right in europe a what let me see a trout will cost you about two and a half euros um salmon can be like 13 euros a kilo it's very dear right fish i think is quite dear or it's costly Another nice word, right? This food is costly. Um, I think this is all too costly. It's too expensive, right? So some nice words we can use for cheap and expensive. Okay, moving on. Other words. So a shop, obviously, to shop is a verb, but a shop is also a noun. Um, in America, we they tend to say a store more. Um, we do use that in... British English sometimes, but maybe we use shop a bit more often. And store, I think, is generally more U.S. Um, whoops, more U.S. Uh, English to shop, right? To shop for. So notice, as always, the grammar to shop for something. So to buy clothes, but to shop for clothes. I'm going shopping for clothes. We often say, instead of to shop, we often say to go shopping, right? A lot of activities has this format. To go running, to go what? To go um, swimming, to go jogging, to go drinking, uh, to go walking, to go shopping, to go skiing. Um, yeah, that's confinement skiing for you. So this kind of structure to go Da, 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 with the ing very common to go shopping um to go shopping for so that's the key message is to remember this preposition to go shopping for clothes to shop for food i know we can shop for lots of things but those are just my examples today <laughs> right great now interestingly to shop around is a different preposition. Um, to shop around actually is a phrasal verb, right? And it means to look for the best price. So if you shop around, that actually means you go from shop to shop to shop to shop. So I'm the kind of person who likes to go into a shop and I see the first, I don't know, the first highlighter I see, and I go, yes, that's what I want and I buy it. However, some people will go into the first shop, look at the highlighter and go, mm, let's shop around. So they go to the next shop and they check the price. And then they go to the next shop and check the price. And then they go to the next shop and check the price. And, and they go on and on all around the shops and they really shop around. And then very often they come back to the first shop <laughs> and they, they buy the first one they saw. Oh, so shopping around, right, is extremely common, shopping around. <laughs> okay, where are we? Here we are. Now, bear with me. Bear with me one moment. <clears throat> okay, shopping around. Uh, another expression, to do the weekly shop. Now, this, to do the weekly shop, is when you shop for food, right? When you go to the supermarket to buy food for the week, you do the weekly shop. So that actually means 
buy food for the whole week. Most people actually know that's not true. Not most people. Some people do a weekly shop. They go to the supermarket and they buy food for the whole for the whole month or the whole week. <laughs> the whole month. The whole week. Um, other people go to local shops every day. Like, you know, like at the start of the video, at the start today, I showed you the shops in Spain. A lot of people go to the butchers, the bakers, the vegetable shop, the greengrocers every day and they buy fresh produce and fresh fruit and veg um, because they can cook it fresh every day. So they don't do a weekly shop. Maybe they do a daily shop, right? You get fresher produce and it's obviously healthier, right, in that sense. Okay, fantastic. Good. Now then, just bear with me two ticks. Just bear with me. Great. Now, in about five minutes or so, our guest has just arrived and just told me. So in about five minutes, we're going to begin. Um, so let's just have a quick look at some collocations, right? Now, when it comes to collocations, as you may know, these are words that often go together, right? Two words that go together, a shopping mall or a shopping centre. We often say shopping centre, shopping mall. It's a nice word. Whoops. Mall. Well, some people say mal, <laughs> mall, mall. There are different ways of pronouncing it. I say a shopping mall, shopping mall. <laughs> okay, um, good. Oh, wait a minute. Hang on a minute. <laughs> Great. We've got window shopping. Now, some people love window shopping. That doesn't mean you're buying windows. No, it means you're looking through the window to, to just look without buying. You're just looking at things. Actually, you don't have to look through the window. I mean, you know, nowadays, nowadays people actually go in the shop and say, I'm window shopping. They're inside the shop. But traditionally, we would just walk past the shop, look in the window, go, oh, it's nice. Yeah, maybe next month I can buy that. And you don't buy things, you just look at things. So to go window shopping. We talk about high street shop, um, especially in Britain. We have lots of high street, high street shops. So the bakers, which sells bread, the butchers, which sells meat, um, all of these are your typical high street shops. The high street is disappearing, right? Bakers for bread, butchers for meat, um, news agents for newspapers and stationery, and probably milk as well. <laughs> so all of these are your typical high street shops. Or the corner shop. I mean, the corner shop is kind of is what it says, right? It's a, the, it's the shop on the corner. These are quite um, quite common, actually, corner shops. In fact, I did have a picture of a corner shop. Let me see if I can show you a corner shop. It's the shop on the corner. <laughs> surprise, surprise. And these are very common in Britain. Here, look over here. So you get shops like this. I mean, literally, they are called the corner shop, right? And they may sell anything, often newspapers, um, sweets, little supermarkets. Um, they are the classic. They're normally on the corner, like this one, mini markets, selling food and wine. So they're right on the corner. Um, and those are your classic kind of corner shops. I'm not going there. My internet's not great today, not to worry. So corner shops, retail shops, retail or any shops that sell directly to the customer as opposed to a wholesale shop, right, which sells to, to businesses or to other shops. Retail sells to customers. Nice. Great. And a one-stop shop. You may have heard the expression, a one-stop shop is where you can buy everything in the one shop, so to speak. Okay. I'm talking a lot. I've got to check in, see how you guys are doing. 
I also go window shopping. Right, yeah, great. Nilojan, that's a great comment. Remember, I always go window shopping. Window in the singular, right? I go window, window shopping. Even though you look at different windows, it's got to be in the singular. It's window shopping. Great. And Roselle, I agree, Roselle. I love window shopping because it gives me time to think if I really need to buy it. Yeah, do you really need to buy it? That's right. Great. We've got other collocations. We've got coffee shop from Madushi. Great. Very good. <clears throat> yep. Sifedin. I go every Saturday to a fishmonger shop. The fishmonger. Great. And so the fishmonger shop, we would normally use this. We would say apostrophe S to the fishmongers, right? So instead of the bread shop to the baker's. Instead of the fish shop, the fishmongers, right? That just means the shop where they sell fish. Absolutely. Great. Sweet Baby tells us about shopping hours. Lovely. Um, in the UK, Sadna tells us there are off licenses. Yes. And they sell um, booze. <laughs> booze is alcohol, basically. Drinks, wine, soft drinks. And uh, we've got department stores in the US. Absolutely. Brilliant. Shop till you drop, Charry says. Shop till you drop. That's a great expression, to shop so much for hours and hours until you fall over. You're so tired. So to shop a lot is to shop till you drop. <laughs> great. Shop till you drop, right? To shop for hours. I cannot shop for hours. I get so bored. Some people love it, right? Some people love shopping for hours. But me, as I said, I'm the kind of get it done man. I just get in the shop, see something I need, pay for it. Don't shop around. Don't shop till I drop. I just get in, get out <laughs> as quick as I can. That's me for shopping. Right. Lovely. So listen, we're going to move on now. Um, I hope our guest is still there. <laughs> he might have disappeared. You never know. But it's moving on <clears throat> to essential vocabulary to our guest. OK, so I'm going to just go and check. Just wait one moment. Bear with me and let's sort out how this is going to work. Dun, dun, dun. So I'm going to join the call, right? Interesting. I'm going to join the call. <laughs> right. Hello. Great. Hi. I can see you. Nobody else can see you yet. You need to unmute, Eli. Okay. Unmuting. Unmuting. And now I'm going to try and bring you in. Great. Ah, great. I think you're in. I'm going to try and share the screen so you can see what's going on as well. Ideal. Hopefully this should work. Great. So can you can you see us, us uh, Eli? <laughs> I, I can see you. I, I presume there's many others out there. <laughs> there's one or two people out there. I'm not sure. Yeah, there's only about a thousand people out there. Not too many. <laughs> <laughs> Right. So guys who are watching, welcome. Um, well, let me welcome Eli. His name is Eli. And some of you guessed correctly that um, I'll put the name up. Some of you kind of correctly guessed it was Eli who was on the Facebook group the other day. Um, I'm just going to check that people can hear you and see you. So just give me a, a yes in the comments, guys, if you can see and hear Eli. Eli, Maybe you can start just saying hello and tell us a bit about yourself. Sure. So hello, everybody. My name is Eli. I'm an English teacher from London and I specialize in IELTS preparation like Keith. Fantastic. I have, yeah, I have a YouTube channel, which is English Pro Tips um, IELTS Preparation and a website, which is EnglishProTips.com. Great. And you're you're based in um in Dublin in Ireland is that right? That's right. Yeah, I've been here for the last just over a year actually. Yeah. And how is life there? 
Life in Dublin is good. It's it's a cold winter at the moment. And actually, for the entire year that I've been here, we've been in and out of lockdown. So it's not been the full Irish experience, but it's been pretty, <laughs> it's been very nice to live here all the same. The full Irish experience. I'm, when you say that, I'm thinking of um, fried breakfast, pints of Guinness, things exactly, like that. Exactly, yeah. A very active nightlife in Ireland, especially in Dublin. Yeah, I can imagine. Indeed, yeah. Fantastic, good. So, um, Eli, thank you very much for coming on the on the show, if it is a show, on the uh, the program. Um, we, what we're going to do, I mean, as, as we've mentioned earlier, um, so we're going to have a bit of a conversation about shopping. We'll be asking a few different questions to each other, and then we're going to kind of highlight, highlight, across on my word document some of the expressions that come up um and we may get i'm sure i'll be watching out for people's comments we may get some questions as we go maybe towards the end but let's um let's you and i begin on our adventure our shopping adventure <laughs> so <laughs> just give me a moment i'm going to pull up some questions for me as a reference right so um Eli, I'm going to ask first and then we can kind of take it in turns maybe. So we're talking about shopping today. Do you do you enjoy shopping? Not particularly, no, Keith. Um, it, it tends to depend on what I'm shopping for. If I've got a, a clear purpose, for example, if I need to buy a new shirt or a gift for somebody, then I do enjoy shopping because I see it as having an objective. But I've never been someone that enjoys browsing or going window shopping or even going from shop to shop. That's not really my thing. Right, right. Interesting. Right. Now, I'm going to pull out some things. You said some interesting things there. At the start, you said um, it tends to depend on, which I thought was nice, right? Instead of it depends on, it tends to depend on something that you said. Um let me see if it's I can. A very just... useful phrase for IELTS. I think so. Yeah, in many, many different areas. Let me bring this up um, and see if everybody can see this. Um, oh, let me see. I am experimenting here. Wish me luck. <laughs> it tends to depend on. And then you talked about browsing shops. I think you said. What do you mean when you say browsing shops? Browsing, browsing shops, shops, I guess, I would, guess be it would be kind be of going, going from, from shop to shop without really a clear purpose, but just, just seeing what's inside them. Right, brilliant. So going from shop to shop, great. Browsing shops, that's nice. Excellent, nice, good. Um, some good expressions. I'm not sure what else you said. Window shopping, of course. Well, also window shopping, which I guess is similar to browsing shops, right? I guess it is, yes. I mean, window shopping, We, I guess the intention is not maybe to buy, but to look at potential purchases, maybe. Mm. Mm. I guess it's also got an idea that you don't necessarily go into the shop. You kind of stand outside looking through the window and then moving on to the next shop to see what, what right. they have on display. right. Right, right, exactly. Yes, have on display. That's nice as well. Have on display. Great. Now, some people are saying there is an echo. I'm not sure if the echo is just when we are reduced or if it's just when we're together. <clears throat> I'm going to try something. Eli, I'm going to turn off the sharing just for a moment and see if that changes it. Yeah, we can keep it like this, actually. Yeah, yeah. And I, I can feed in things. Okay, so have things on display. I'll just highlight there for people as well. Okay, super. And what, what about, about you, Keith? Are you into shopping? Do you know what? Um, I'm not a big fan of shopping, to be honest, um, if, especially for clothes. I, I'm not very fashion conscious, so I, I go shopping like twice a year for show for clothes <laughs> um but i love i do love food shopping um as you know i'm a big fan of cooking and uh, eating healthy eating so i do enjoy you know going around the aisles in the supermarkets and picking up lots of stuff especially local spanish food that maybe i can't get in the uk 
I bet Santander is great for that. It is fantastic for that. There's a lot of interesting stuff here. Um, I mean, it's a, a seafood <clears throat> place. It's a, it's a port. It's a coastal city. The seafood and the, the fish, anchovies, um, white bait. You get lots of nice fishy stuff. <laughs> and, uh, and Keith, you mentioned the word uh, isle. What, what is this isle exactly? That's a good point, actually. So an isle, different from IELTS, the aisle <laughs> is the like the passageway or the corridor in the supermarket. It's also the aisle in the aeroplane, in the in the middle of the aeroplane when you walk down, um, or where the air hostess walks down. And in fact, when the man and the wife get, or, or the man and the man, or the man and the woman get married, they walk down the aisle. So it's a very, very useful word in many contexts. I'll, I'll just write it up. Um, it's tricky spelling, tricky spelling as well, as well right? right? Yeah, exactly. Isle as a noun. So in the aisles, or you can say walk along the aisles. And Keith, and Keith do, you do you have, have a favourite aisle, aisle in the supermarket? In the supermarket? <clears throat> say that again. Uh, do you have a favourite aisle in the supermarket? Ah, oh, that's an interesting question. Do I have a favourite aisle in the supermarket? Um, <clears throat> I probably do. The I've got quite a few actually. Yes. Um, so the it's actually not an aisle. There's several aisles. Is the fruit and vegetable section? I love fruit and vegetable section because there are so many unusual vegetables. Um, but I also, if the truth be known, I do like the pastry aisle. <laughs> where they have cakes and bread and pastries. <laughs> I could imagine quite a few of your listeners probably agree with you. I wonder if they do. <laughs> aisle. Does anybody like people like the seafood aisle? Yeah, there's an echo at times, but it's great. Seafood delicacies. Let's see. <clears throat> oh, this is interesting. So we've got a, a comment up from Ignilitsi. Coupon shopping is a very popular way of shopping in the USA. They collect coupons and then go and get things from the supermarkets. Is that common in the UK? Coupon shopping, collecting coupons, is that common in the UK? <clears throat> it's it's fairly common in certain supermarkets. Um, usually it'll be on particular items <clears throat> that you don't necessarily need um, in right. the UK, that is. Right. So, for example, special deals like... <clears throat> um, uh, buy one get one free on special kind of canned food that you wouldn't normally buy right um what's quite common at least here in ireland is um vouchers so typically you'll get your receipt after you've done your grocery shopping yep. and then it'll say come back within <coughs> 10 days and we'll give you 10 euros off if you spend over 100 euros or 5 euros yes if you spend over 50 euros we have exactly the same here in spain we have vouchers so as soon as you buy they say come back and spend 50 euros and you'll get 5 euros discount it's very very clever actually the whole thing um, it really keeps you coming back yes exactly exactly i'm going to put those words up um just to help people. So yeah, we've talked about coupons or vouchers <clears throat> that offer discounts um, to incentivize you. There's a nice word. To shop more, right? I guess to shop more. Yeah, nice. Coupons or vouchers. So common in Spain, also common in um, the UK and the US. Got a quick question. I've got a few comments, actually. Mumtaz says, I love burger aisles. <laughs> 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 Little Jewel says, I love the sushi aisle. <clears throat> Me too. And Vincent's question is, what's the difference between aisle and aisle? Now, the second aisle is I-S-L-E. <clears throat> I-S-L-E. Like the Emerald Isle. Right. Don't they talk about island being the Emerald Isle? <clears throat> so I guess Isle, I-S-L-E, is, is, is the same as island. Um, it's just an island. We have the Isle of Man and the Isle of Wight next to Britain. 
sorry, <clears throat> excuse me, next to England, part of Britain. Um, so yes, Isle is the is the island, and Isle with the A I S L E is the the shopping aisle or the corridor. Yes, nice question. Um, you're right. People love the snack aisle. Yu Jin says that she loves the she likes. I like to snack aisle. <laughs> I like to go to the snack aisle. <laughs> and <laughs> you could even say I like to browse the snack aisle. Nice. I like to browse the snack aisle. That's nice. Nath says the toiletry aisle. I don't know why though. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Some nice comments there. <clears throat> um good. That's consumerism. Nursery TV consumerism. That's right. The vouchers is consumerism. That's a bigger a bigger question. Um, do, I mean, what what do you think about? Um, it's a big question, Eli, about consumerism, and you know the fact that we are pushed all the time to consume more, whether it's upgraded phones or new clothes. Um, what do you think? Are, are we living in a consumerist society? <clears throat> I, I totally think we do. Yeah, that's right. Um, I think it's very difficult to resist mm -hmm. because we are absolutely surrounded by adverts that are becoming ever and ever more cunning mm -hmm. and um, very attractive and have become very good at um, encouraging us to spend even more money on things that we don't necessarily need. Yeah, very, very true. I couldn't agree more. Um Interesting what you said there, ever more cunning. So the adverts are ever more cunning. Ever more cunning, sorry. Ever more just means increasingly, right? Kind of on a growing scale, increasingly cunning. Cunning just meaning clever. So they're becoming ever more cunning and attractive to, to make us buy things and shop more. Um, do, you, do you find that you're quite susceptible to adverts and to particular products being on deals? It's a in, very interesting question. It depends, to be honest, where the advert is. Um, so I'm not susceptible to adverts on the internet very much. So I'm not susceptible to kind of Facebook adverts or YouTube adverts. But adverts on a poster as I walk past a shop, yes. So as I walk past the, the supermarket and it says buy two loaves of bread uh, and for the price of one, I will I will remember that. And when I'm in the mm. shop, I will buy two <clears throat> loaves of bread. So you could say they grab your attention or catch your eye. Yeah, exactly. They grab my attention. That's nice. Yes. Let's make a note of that. <clears throat> Bring this up as well. So the ads... Because adverts is a very common thing, right? They grab, the adverts grab my attention. Grab kind of metaphorically, I guess, because it's to take or to capture. To grab or capture my attention. Wanty. Nice. Lovely. Yes. What else about shopping? Um... Well, I guess nowadays online shopping is becoming increasingly popular. Yeah. Do you do a lot of online shopping, Keith? I do a lot. I buy an awful lot of things on Amazon, um, to be honest, because it's so convenient. It's really fast and they deliver within a day or two days usually. Um, so I use Amazon Spain and, <clears throat> and I just think it's really practical um, and efficient. Yeah, very convenient. Super convenient. What about you? So I'm currently an Amazon Prime member, but ah. that's only because I left it to the last minute to buy my girlfriend a Valentine's gift. <laughs> so I had to become an Amazon Prime member so that it would arrive um, in time for Sunday, in time for Valentine's Day. But, the... but I, I, I do intend to cancel it quite uh, quite soon. And I've left many a reminder on my phone to cancel my Amazon Prime membership because I know I'll just get sucked in and buy even more products from Amazon. Because it makes the delivery cheaper, right? 
It makes the delivery so so cheap and very convenient. <laughs> that is so nice. You love your girlfriend so much that you paid for Amazon Prime just so no, she no, got. No. I got it thirty days for free. <laughs> Oh, that's right. why I need to cancel it very soon. <laughs> I hope she's not watching. <laughs> and the burning question, what did you buy for her? I bought her a cocktail set. Ooh. So a little bit make... of fun while we're in lockdown. I can show you, actually. It's right here. Brilliant. <laughs> so, yeah. So this it was going to be a lot, of, a lot of fun over lockdown. Make your own cocktails. Make our own cocktails. Wow. That looks nice. Yep, keep yourselves entertained in confinement. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <funny>. <laughs> nice, very nice. I'm just looking over at seeing what people have got at the moment. Um, there's a quick question here from David who asks, what are gift cards? Eli, what are gift cards? Right, so I guess um, it's a very popular at the moment. Mm. They're a way to buy a certain quantity or the promise of buying a certain quantity from a uh, from a shop or a company. So, for example, if you buy a gift card from, let's say, um, iTunes, then you're saying, um, I'll give you 10 euros or 10 pounds. And then in the future, whoever I give this gift card to can buy 10 pounds or 10 euros worth of songs from your store. Mm, right. So I, so they're online cards or also sh physical shop cards? Also physical shop cards. Right. But right. They're, they're very popular now with so many shops being closed yep. during lockdown. And it's a way to support a lot of local businesses. Right. So you're saying, I can't necessarily shop in your store, but I'm going to buy some gift cards so that when you open, I can come back and I can spend that money. Ah, nice, nice gift cards. Great. There's your answer, David. There's another quick question here from Nilo Jan, who says, "What's come back, Nilo Jan? What's the difference between online shopping and physical shopping?" Okay, so yeah, <laughs> good question. So on online is over the internet, and then physical shopping usually refers to going to a brick and mortar store. Yep. That might be one for the whiteboard. That is one for the whiteboard. Let me write that down. A bricks and mortar. Is it a brick or bricks? Brick. A brick, brick and mortar store or shop. I was saying earlier, we probably say shop more than store in Britain, I guess. Um, where are we? A brick and mortar shop. So that's a physical shop, different from a online shop. Lots of the brick and mortar shops in the UK are disappearing, aren't they? The high street is, is changing very quickly. Totally. And that's actually quite a common theme, I think, um, in aisles, isn't it? Um, yes. It can appear in, in writing task two, and it can also appear in, in part three um, of the speaking test, talking about that kind of development in society and whether or not it's a good thing. Right, exactly. Yes. So the... the the change of the high street, the the move or the closing down of a lot of physical brick and mortar shops, is it a good or a bad thing? Question for you: Is it a good or a bad thing? Well, I mean, it, I think it's it's an inevitable thing, which is <laughs> which means it's something that is going to happen. Yeah, um, it's more difficult to say whether it's a good or bad thing. Um, on the one hand, it's a real shame that a lot of people who work in these brick and mortar stores. Um, are losing their jobs or going out of business. Mm -hmm. um, but for the consumer, um, the rise of online shopping tends to bring a lot of convenience. Mm. They do, indeed, as we mentioned earlier. Yes, that's a great answer. I'm going to share some of your comments there. That was really good. Um, it's an inevitable thing is a nice phrase. It's an inevitable thing. It's going to happen. On the one hand, classic. On the one hand, da, 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 but also, so it's a shame that, and then going out of business, you mentioned things that uh, companies or shops going out of business, um, kind of meaning closing, closing down, which is a yeah, very yeah. common phrasal verb, right? To close down. So many shops. Also, also, go, go, go into, into liquidation. liquidation. That's another, That's similar, another similar one. one. Yes. Go into liquidation. 
liquidation, which kind of means, yeah, they don't become water, but they their their <laughs> assets disappear and they yes they go bankrupt. Right, is the other one go bankrupt? It's actually, it's actually scary, scary how many, how many terms, terms we have we have for uh, closing, closing down. Actually, actually, actually think of it, think of it. We do, we do. Go belly up. There's another one. Go belly go up. Belly up. <laughs> And I think with with COVID, we're going to get even more and more usage out of these um, these expressions. Unfortunately, Unfortunately so, so. The rise of online shopping. Yes, that's good. That's great. We've got a quick question now um, from Dildora, who says, "I'm a shopaholic, or a shopaholic person." I say a shopper. I'm going to just take the person off because we don't normally put person on the end. We just say, "I'm a shopaholic." How can I get rid of this habit? <laughs> <laughs> Any suggestions? How can I get... uh, so suggest suggestions from, from, from you, you or from the audience. Oh, right. Yeah. Well, I, I, I don't know. I mean, um, like I myself am probably the opposite of a shopaholic, so I can't really relate to, to that um, difficulty. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's a hard... I think definitely yeah. not being a member of um, subscriptions such as Amazon Prime certainly help. Mm. Um, and probably getting rid of shopping apps on your phone will also yeah. help. Yeah, I tend to agree. I would say stay away from the shops. Make it difficult for you to shop. Yeah. So... Don't go to the shopping centers. Exactly. Sure. Don't go to the shopping mall. Or if you do, leave your money at home. Yeah. let's go window shopping right and let's see I think we've got time maybe just for one more quick question and this is from Dorsa and she says why men don't like shopping it oh. is a generalisation but what do you think I mean, I mean I know a lot of men that really really do enjoy shopping in general do I know more women that enjoy shopping maybe but actually, the women that are closest to me, I'd say, is pretty much a 50-50 split. Um, Keith, what about you? Do you know any, can you think of any reasons why men might not enjoy shopping as much as women? Um, I think it's a bit of a generalisation, but I, I think it depends on the personality a bit. I do know a lot of men who are um, more focused on efficiency and productivity than the aesthetics so, I, I, you know, quite a few men I know when they're shopping for clothes, their mindset is practical. Does it fit? Is it comfy? I'll buy it. And, mm. I, and, and I think maybe a certain number of women, not, not all women, are a bit more analytical. You know, is it, is it comfy? Does it fit? Is it the right price? Can we find it cheaper? Let's shop around. Um, and it's more of an enjoyable experience. For me, shopping is not really enjoyable. It's more of a necessity. But I think, yeah, it's hard to say that all men are like that. And, and again, I think it, it relates back to what we were saying earlier, that it often depends on, on what we're talking about shopping for. So, for example, um, you mentioned yourself, when it comes to shopping for food, yeah. you're basically a shopaholic, but you really enjoy the process, right? Yeah, true. That's very, very true. I do enjoy the process of shopping for food. Um, and it's just something I'm interested in, whereas I'm less interested in clothes. Um, like books, if I shop for books, I really enjoy it because I'm thinking about the enjoyment I will get from using the books. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Lovely. Good. Um, I think we're probably just about there. There's a lot of comments have just come in. <laughs> and they're talk ah, there's a few people talking about recommendations of uh, <laughs> men are stingy. Here we go. <laughs> men are more specific um the, the men actually have things to do whoops <laughs> not good because of their wives <laughs> right interesting comments right anything else okay that's great i think um eli we've had lots of questions we've shared lots of um vocabulary there as well and ideas of course people can always come back and they can listen again to the recording and you can pick out even more from the answers that eli and myself were giving 
Um, but that's great. Listen, it's been it's been fantastic. It's really good having you here on the live lesson. Um, it's been great fun. And also, I mean, I know you put up um, a post on the the Facebook page the other day about your writing and um, your website. If people want to find out more about you and what you do, where where should they go? So they should go to EnglishProTips.com. English. Which is, I'll put this up. Yep. Okay. Yep. Which is my website, and they can check out my YouTube channel, which is also English Pro Tips, yep. and then IELTS preparation. So we're focusing on getting ready for the IELTS test there. Right. And you're not just doing speaking like me. You're doing all the different skills, right? That's right. Yeah. And okay. particularly writing at the moment. And particularly writing. Right. I know there's a big demand for writing. So great. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a tough part of the test. Yes, it is. Very, very challenging. Very, very much so. Great. OK, Eli, um, thank you very much for coming. It's really no, thank good you to very see much you for here. inviting me. Yeah, it was great fun. Okay, best of luck to you and everybody listening. Thank you very much. Take care. We'll speak soon. Okay, bye-bye then. Cheers, bye-bye. <laughs> Great, there we have it. So that's it. That was um, Eli. Fantastic. Just let me close up. Um, English Pro Tips, you can go and check out if you want to check out his website and go and have a look at what he's doing there. If you're interested in other things like reading, uh, listening and writing, you may find some interesting stuff there. Great. So... Do let me know um, either now or later in the comments if if having somebody in the live lesson to chat and talk, if it's useful for you, um, if you have any suggestions, then that would be great. Um, I thought it might be nice to have a few different people come in for maybe 20 minutes um, so you don't get bored of me. <laughs> well, you can listen to different accents, different voices, men and women and you know learn different kinds of language so i thought that might be useful of course all of these notes that we've had so we've tried to write down some of the notes that came up as we began talking about browsing shops about aisles we talked about um, about vouchers some nice language ever more cunning nice grab my attention okay Brick and mortar shop, very, very useful in that discussion, as Eli said, about online and offline. It's a big topic that's often discussed. Um, and all these expressions about going out of business, which we do have so many for. OK, lovely. So I hope that's useful language for all of you. Great. Now, what do I need next? I know what I need next. I need a drink. Badab she be do be do be do be bum bum bum. That's better. Good. So great. Um, I'm going to move on. I'm going to ask a, a question actually. Um, great. Thank you. Must go on. Check it out. Good. Do check him out. <laughs> it's useful. Very informative. Fun to have him here. Certainly fruitful. Nice. Great. Yay, excellent idea. Sharing information. That's what it's all about, Mumtaz. Sharing information. Okay, great. <laughs> we never get bored of you. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, you are missing the music. Break time. It is break time. Let's do it again. I I'm still thirsty. Badab she be do be do be do be bum bum bum. Okay, so I've got a question for you, guys. Um, here's a quick question for you. This one here. Do you prefer online or offline shopping? Let me know in the comments below. Which one do you prefer, online or offline? <laughs> right. as you're writing down your comments. Um, is there a coupon code? I think there is a coupon code. There was a post in the Facebook group that you can find out and check his um, coupon code there. If you're not in the Facebook group, do come and join us. Um, Facebook, it's Keith's Mastermind Community. 
um, just search in Facebook and you'll find that group. Come and join us. Obviously, it's free. There's a lot of activity there. You can find out what's going on. Okay, excellent. So let's have a look what you've been saying. I'm going to move up. So offline or online? <clears throat> so Jelin says, where are you, Jelin? Offline. POK8 also says offline. Ira, nice avatar. I prefer offline. Um, and also we've got Thirunavukasrasu, Thiranavukarasu, who says offline. That's more comfortable. Great. Um, Inderjit says, I do prefer online shopping. Right, right. This is a nice expression from, from Fong, who says, I lean towards online shopping. Like, I lean towards, right? I like online shopping. Lovely expression. Love it. Merv says, it depends on the day. Depends on the day, I guess. Depends on the day. And maybe on the what you're buying, right? Oh, you've a man after my own heart. Samir says, depends on what we are buying. And also the price difference. Yes, it tends to be cheaper online, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Shai says, I like online shopping, but I prefer physical shopping. Nice, right? Um, brick and mortar shops. Great. Vera, interesting, says, um, online in China, offline in Australia. I wonder why. I wonder why. Um Mohammed Shihabun says online shopping because it saves time. That's true, but not for grocery items. Lovely. Grocery items are, are the, the fruits, the vegetables, things like that. Perishable items, right? Things that may go off. Lovely. So I'm just going to write down, I'm going to share some of your comments here. Let's write down some of the interesting things that you said. I prefer, da, da, da. I lean towards, I like that, as you noticed. I lean towards, da, 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 meaning I, I like or I prefer. Great. Um, online shopping saves time. It depends on what I am buying, right? Remember the on, the grammar of the words is so important, right? It depends on, whoops, sorry, I'll get you off for a moment. Mohammed, it depends on what I'm buying. Yes. Um, great. Elmoy says both. <laughs> Indeed, both. Why not? It's not one or the other. It's both of them. Um, Emma says, I love shopping offline because I can try on stuff, right? You're thinking about clothes, right? Yes, that's a very good point, Emma. So I like shopping. I like physical shopping because I can try stuff on. Nice to try on, especially clothes. We use that very commonly with clothes to try stuff on. Uh, I'll just put clothes. We're normally talking about clothes if you're trying stuff on, right? Or here's the other one, right? I like physical shopping because I can try stuff out. Now, if I try stuff out, it's not clothes. It's more like electronic stuff. So things that work or don't work. So if you're trying out, you're just checking if it works or if it doesn't. So notice try on and try out. Slightly different. Okay, super, super. What else have we got? Yeah, so Fi Yuen says a similar thing. I prefer offline shopping because I love browsing shops and I can touch the material, like clothes material. Yes, good. Yes, I can touch the material. 
I can actually touch the material or you could talk more generally about the products. I can actually touch the products. So you know if they're good quality or not good quality, right? Okay, brilliant. I'm going to move on. Where am I going to move on to? Um, I'm going to take that one off. Before we look at idioms, I'm going to have a quick look at this. Oh, yes, we've got enough time. A quick look at this question. Um, describe something you bought and felt happy with. So something you bought and felt happy with. This, as you can guess, is a kind of a part two kind of question. Um, there have in the past been different questions about something you bought and never used, something you bought that needed repairing, um, something you bought you felt happy with. So here, let's um, brainstorm ideas. What kind of thing would you buy and feel happy with? Let's have a look. Come and give me some of your ideas. Something that you've bought or you might buy and feel happy with. So we've got people talking about phones. Yes, absolutely. Phones will make you very happy. <laughs> Don't know why, <laughs> but they make people happy. Um, perfume. People have talked about perfume. Who made a per uh, gulsafa? Gulsafa, very good point. Perfume, it was expensive, but it felt me happier. Oh, it felt me happier. That's interesting, Gulsafa. Um, I would change that in English. I would say it made me feel happier. It was expensive, but it made me feel happier, right? Nice, lovely. Thank you very much. That's great. Thank you for sharing. Um, great. What else? Things that made you happy. Uh, Schnehid says, I was over the moon when I bought the iPhone 12, although it cost an arm and a leg. Lovely. It cost an arm and a leg. Um it, very expensive, right? I was happy although, or even though, although it cost me an arm and a leg. And we are going to look at idioms very in a moment. Cost me an arm and a leg, which just means it was expensive. Do you remember the um, synonyms of expensive? Dear, costly, Thank you very much, Snehit. Yeah, I was happy, although it cost me an arm and a leg. Very, very nice. Books, right? Somebody talked about books make you happy. Yep, a new laptop. I can see why that makes you happy. Yes, you can watch all the new Netflix. <laughs> Brilliant cell phone gadgets. Yep, so Vizella talks about gadgets. So those can be... Anything. You can have electronic gadgets, phone, stopwatch, um, all sorts. Uh, you can have cooking gadgets, right? Things to help you in the in the kitchen. Of course, I would be thinking about that. <laughs> I'm Marvel says, I felt delighted while buying a variety of desserts at the baker's since I personally love to eat those. Very nice. Me too. So just notice the a uh, Marvel, a uh, variety at the baker's, right? So we always say a variety of, a variety of, a lot of, a variety of, a variety of desserts at the baker's, the butchers, the baker's, because you're talking about a specific shop in this case. Lovely, nice. <laughs> very, very nice. Good. Oh, <laughs> well, the vaccination. That's interesting. Nah says COVID-19 vaccination. That's interesting. Did you have to buy that? Did you have to pay for it? I thought in most countries it was free, but maybe you paid for it. I don't know. Maybe. Interesting. A pullover is nice. Yeah. Joyota. Joy. 
joy, gioti. So it's a pullover. A pullover, which is just, it's a jumper, right? Clothes. So any kind of clothes. Maybe it's a jumper, sweater, dress, shirt, who knows? All sorts of clothes that you may buy and make you happy. Okay. Um, yes, I may taste a brick and mortar shop is a real shop. It's made of stone, bricks, not online. Well, so we call it a brick and mortar shop. Yes. Right, Arda. Yeah, be careful. Talking about a gift, this is something you bought. So you can't talk about a present, right? Ah. Smartwatch, phone, DSL camera, a car. Yeah, of course, a car. <laughs> Lynn, interesting expression. I bought some cosmetics and I'm out of this world. You would say something is out of this world, right? If something is fantastic, it's out of this world, right? My my computer is out of this world. The cosmetics are out of this world. Um, but I feel, well, I bought some co cosmetics and I feel on top of the world, right? I'm, whoops, I'm on top of the world. So the feeling of happiness is on top of the world. Something fantastic is it is out of this world. Really good uh, point there, Lynn. Thank you so much for sharing. Excellent. Describe something you bought and felt happy with. Okay, on this question, there are lots of idioms we can use. Let's have a look at some idioms here. Now we got... Uh, as we all somebody shared with us, it cost an arm and a leg um, is to be expensive, right? It cost an arm and a leg. Notice, and I'll just do this to show you how it's pronounced. We say cost an arm, cost an arm and a leg. So the and becomes an arm and a leg right watch watch my mouth arm and a leg arm and a leg say that an arm and a leg good connecting whole thing it cost an arm and a leg nice and then repeat it two or three times to get the feel it cost an arm and a leg it cost an arm and a leg it cost an arm and a leg. Right? I went to the shops, I bought a new iPhone, it cost an arm and a leg. It's music, right? It's music, absolutely. English is music. So, nice expression, something that is expensive. Um, you can say, I paid over the odds for it. I paid over the odds. Now, you can probably guess over means too much. So it means I paid too much, right? It was too expensive. It shouldn't be that much, right? I went to buy the iPhone 12. Um, I paid I paid a thousand euros. Today, there's a discount and it's 900. Oh. I paid over the odds. Silly me. I should have waited. I paid over the odds. I paid too much. Or it's going for a song. <laughs> la 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 la. It just means it's cheap. Now the iPhone 12 is 600 euros. It's going for a song. <laughs> Notice we say four becomes f. Four a. Furra, furra, say that, furra, furra song, furra song. And the whole thing, it's going for a song. And then two or three times, it's going for a song, it's going for a song, it's going for a song. Great, and then you can... Make a sentence. I bought the new iPhone because it was going for a song. 
<laughs> it was or is it was going for a song interesting song of course in manchester and the north of england we pronounce the g right i know that you shouldn't and in most dialects you don't pronounce the g it's song but in the north of england we say song song g -g. <laughs> so don't worry too much if your teacher says oh it's wrong it should be song go, oh no 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 i'm doing the, the manchester accent song song <laughs> Another nice expression, kind of an idiom, is retail therapy. So therapy is anything that helps you get better, helps you recover. Um, so you may, after an accident, you may have physiotherapy. You may have mental therapy. Um, you may have psychiatric therapy. Anything to help you recover. Retail therapy is shopping that makes you happy. <laughs> So, you know, I, a lot of people have said this actually in the um, in the Facebook chat. We were saying, yeah, I love I love a bit of retail therapy. I like retail therapy. You know, it cheers me up, especially in these days of covid. Right. Retail therapy can make you happy. Absolutely. To talk shop. Well, to talk shop. Right. This is interesting when you're talking shop. Imagine the situation. OK. Um I finish work, right? I, I I finish work and I'm teaching students, right? And then I go home and I have dinner with the family. And then I start talking about learning English, idioms, vocabulary. And my wife and daughter say, Keith, Dad, will you stop talking shop? Why? Because I'm talking about work. And it's ever so boring, right? There's nothing worse than your fam members of your family talking about work. Talk about something else. To talk shop is to talk about your work, right? The old idea, the old idea, the idea that your shop is your work, right? You have a shop, that's your work. So if you talk shop, you're talking about work. So seen as a negative thing normally, right? People usually say, don't talk shop. So talk about your work. So it's usually a negative thing. <laughs> Talking about your work. Don't talk shop, Dad. <clears throat> He's so boring. He's always talking shop, right? Talking shop. Be careful. Not about. Talk shop. Talking shop. He's always talking shop at parties. <laughs> there is nothing worse. Great. So all of these are some nice little idioms you could be using. Um, let me just check in with you guys. Have you guys got any other idioms? Pay through the nose. Yes, that's interesting, right? Pay over the odds and pay through the nose. Emma, well done. Pay through the nose is to pay too much. So let's do that. Put this one over here. I paid through the nose. Yeah, the nose. <laughs> Crazy expression. Right, Jenny says, what was the group page for my Facebook? Facebook page, this one, Keith Mastermind Community. Uh, Jerry, for shop talk, I don't know about that. Talk shop as a verb. But shop talk, I don't think we'd say that. Retail therapy refreshment, kind of, yeah, to make you feel better, basically. My father always talks shop. <laughs> uh, good question here. Um, does, let me take this one off. Does talk shop be also used about schoolwork? Not really. Not really schoolwork. It could be metaphorically. You could, as a bit of a joke, if you said to your schoolmates, oi, stop talking shop. Yes, as a bit of a joke, it could be. Normally, it's about work, though. Okay, fantastic, brilliant. So all of those different expressions, we're going to move on next. What's coming up next? I know what's coming up next. The next thing coming up is this. Are you ready? This will take me a moment. <clears throat> 
We're going to move on and we're going to look at um, something different. <laughs> yes, and here we go. Nice model answer time where you ask me, I try and answer. OK, um, we'll take off the clocks. I'm not sure we'll need it, but we might do. You never know. Great. So sample answers. Any question on the topic of shopping, um, you can ask me part one, part two or a part three question. We can repeat some of the questions we had with uh, Eli, if you like. Um, so. Guys, disco music, absolutely, love it, great. So send me a question. <laughs> Good, can I rewatch the video, Schwen? Yes, you can. This, this video will be um, recorded and kept on both Facebook and YouTube, so you can come back and see it on YouTube. Something to do with shopping, right? Um, oh, this is a good question. And I've seen this question come up before. So let's try this. It's a very tough question. And I don't want to answer it because it's so difficult. But I should, right? Because then we can all learn, including myself. <laughs> this is a great question. What are the differences between men's and women's shopping habits? Great. Fuang, thank you very much for this question. Let me just put it up here. Excellent. I'm just going to take you off for the moment. I'll see if I can make it slightly smaller. What are the differences between men's and shopping men's and women's shopping habits? That's probably a part three question. So I might take 30 seconds. Um, let me try. OK. Well, I don't want to stereotype or overgeneralize. Um, you know, because I think it depends more on the personality rather than whether it's a man or a woman. Um, however, a, a lot of people do generally say that women enjoy shopping for clothes more than men, maybe because they're more fashion conscious um, and they like to go into a lot more detail, like touching the material, checking the price, checking the quality, um, whereas maybe men are much more practical and, you know, if the item of clothing fits and it's comfy, they may buy it, irrespective of the price. Um, they may be reluctant to go to shop around to find the best item. But as I said, that may be a bit stereotypical. Right. So there are some interesting words there, right? Stereotype, um, overgeneralize, stereotypical all useful words that you you probably want to be careful. You, you don't stereotype or overgeneralize. Um, however, da, 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 da. I talked about comfortable, comfy clothes, maybe men being practical, shop around, compare prices, right? Nice. So great question. Quite a difficult one to answer. Don't feel you always have to tell the truth. Um, and I get nervous sometimes telling the truth because I think, well, it's my business, actually, what my opinion. Um, so you can always just you can lie. You can just make up uh, any opinion if you want, if you prefer, you know, especially if it's a sensitive topic. <laughs> right. Let's have a look. Oh, here's a good one again. And this question is a very common part three question. 
What is the product which is consumed most in your country and why? Yeah, fantastic question. I've seen that come up quite a lot, actually. So, thank you, Anjali. Great. What is the product which is consumed most in your country and why? Right. And notice, okay, notice my answer here. And I'm going to point out something very, very important at the end. But here's my answer first. To be honest, I don't know, statistically speaking, which is the most consumed product in um, in Britain. Um, but I do know that British people um, buy and sell a lot of cheese. Um, we love cheese. So there are many varieties of cheese that are sold across the country. Um, mature cheese, um, blue cheese, crumbly cheese, cheese spreads. It's something that's maybe connected with our eating culture and our culinary heritage. We like to have cheese on sandwiches. We often eat sandwiches at lunchtime. So cheese with different sauces or different kinds of vegetables is a very, very common um, thing for us to consume, um, either at lunchtime um, or, or another time of the day in the afternoon. So I would say, yeah, cheese is one of the most popular most widely consumed products in my country. Right. So what's my point? My point is the test isn't a general knowledge quiz. Now, I guarantee cheese is not the most consumed in my country. I'm sure it's not. But I had some ideas I wanted to talk about, right? I had some language about cheese, mature cheese, blue cheese, cheese spread that I, I thought would be nice to use. So I chose to talk about cheese and that's fine because it's not a general knowledge test. The examiner is not going to get on the internet and said, oh, actually, it's not cheese. It says here, right? It's computers. They're not going to check. It's just an opportunity for you to start talking. So you can choose any product. Just make sure that you say, I think it's one of the most Da, 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 right? And then that's fine. It's one of the most widely consumed products. And then talk about anything, really. <laughs> okay, lovely. I'm just looking at the time. So I'm going to move on because, um, why? Because it's late. We've got about five or 10 minutes left. So we've done two sample answers, which is wonderful. Thank you very much, you guys, for those questions. We're going to move on to our last activity which is Kahoot. For those of you who don't know Kahoot, um, it's a game we play to test our vocabulary. I'm going to log in right now. You can also log in and get ready to play. It's multiple choice, so you get four questions. You have to choose A, B, and C, and I'm going to see if you've been awake. Have you really been awake the last hour, or have you been out on the toilet most of the class? Let's find out what you've been doing and who can remember all of the language from today's um, game, today's game, today's lesson. OK, I'm going to share the screen with you so you know what I'm doing. You know where to go. We're going to play the classic game. Personalize learning. So if you want to go and play it again after, you can if you've made mistakes. You have to put in a nickname. Don't use your real name. Just choose a nickname. <laughs> And here, this is how you play. You either download the app or you go to kahoot.it. Let me um, write that up for you because I just realized it's not there, right? If you want to go to kahoot.it, you can also log in there. Um, choose a name, put in the game pin 3 one zero one four three one okay three one zero one four three one kahoot dot it is where you need to go marianne the fish is the product we eat more in spain i i would agree with you there marianne i think you're right
Spending sprees are common in the UK. I think they used to be. <laughs> Firat, not so much now. People, so many people out of work, so many people at home. Right, I'll just give you a second, a few more seconds to get in there. Um, Sarush, you have the IELTS test tomorrow. Best of luck. I hope it goes well. Diana has been in the toilet. <laughs> oh, great. Shakun's a lively pelican. <laughs> Namaste. Great, thank you. Okay, brilliant. How many people? We've got oh, a lot of people. Um, okay, if you're all signed in. I'm just going to turn up the music a bit because I do like this music. Ganna Shiam also has the IELTS test. So all of you, best of luck if you're doing the IELTS test. Um, absolutely best of best of luck. Yamina says, is it okay if the examiner knows that you're lying? Yes, it's okay. It really is. It's a language test. Don't worry. So let's go. Let's start playing. Let's just close that and let's start. First question, all about shopping. Which is the odd one out? So which has a different meaning? Which is the odd one out with a different meaning? You've got 20 seconds left. If you can't get in, don't worry. Just put your answer in the comments and I can see it there. Which one has a different meaning? Ida, well done. Steve, well done. Ellen, well done. Yeah, 113 of you got costly. Absolutely. Costly means expensive. Um, the others, inexpensive, low-priced and cheap, are all the same meaning, right? Meaning cheap, obviously. Well done. Nice. Well done. What's next? The leaderboard. Proud urchin is first. <laughs> How can an urchin be proud? What are they proud of? <laughs> Lucky goat, I understand, right? Because goats are on top of the mountain. They might fall off. And if you don't, you're lucky. Lucky goat. Mountain Yama is in third. Let's move on. <laughs> Which one means look for the best price? Which one means look for the best price? Yellow Digital Hub. Good luck tomorrow. Lenny, just put your answer in the uh, comments. It's okay. Thank you, Baljeet. So which one means look for the best price? This is difficult, but... Well done, Gulsafa. And well done, uh, Yes, Raja Laskimi. Good. 103 of you got the right answer to shop around, okay? Now, quite a few put shop for. That just means to buy something, not necessarily the best price. Um, talk shop, no, that's to talk about your work, right? And window shop, well, interesting, because window shop might be looking for the best price, right? It might be, but it doesn't have to be. So when you window shop, it doesn't always mean looking for the best price. It may just be looking at different things. However, shopping around must be is always looking for the best price. OK, that was quite tricky, I realise. But well done. Where are we on the leaderboard? Well, the lucky goat has just got luckier. <laughs> Move up to first place. And uh, there's a very happy cheetah in third place. Next question. <clears throat> she splashed blank on a new dress. She splashed blank on a new dress. I think we saw this. I think we looked at this expression. But let's find out. <laughs> Mehmed and Prince Mera, well done. Nancy, well done. Serene, good. Taral, be careful. Parveen, well done. 
Well done, 102 of you. Yeah, she splashed out, which means to spend a lot of money. To splash out on something is to spend a lot of money on something, right? She splashed out on. It's strange, right? Out on, but to spend money on, to splash out on a new dress. Well done. Let's see how lucky that goat is. Oh, the urchin, proud as ever, straight up to first place. Elated cheetah is in second and there's a silly bunny in third and the lucky goat is not so lucky. Next question. Last question. If you pay over the odds, you blank. If you pay over the odds, you blank. What does that mean, to pay over the odds? <clears throat> pay over the odds is two. <clears throat> to pay too much. Well done. Wow. Excellent. That's like almost everybody. Excellent. To pay too much is to pay over the odds. Nice. Get a bargain is just to get good value for money. Get a discount is to get something cheaper. To pay too little, no. To pay too much is to pay over the odds or to pay through the nose. Let's find out all those different cheetahs, urchins and goats. Silver hen. Wow. Lucky goat. But who's first? It's the proud urchin. Certainly does have something to be proud of today. <laughs> uh, well done. Uh, well done, sir. Or madam. Proud urchin. Great. So we've seen some really good expressions there that we can use with shopping, buying things, cheap, expensive. We've looked at a lot today and we're coming to the very, very end now. Thank you very much for joining me. If you are on YouTube, do remember to subscribe, turn on the notifications. Um, do check us out on Facebook if you want to join the Facebook group. Um, that's just there. It's the Keith's Mastermind Community. There's a lot happening there. You can find out lots of information, lots of motivation, um, and lots of innovation. Very, very interesting group, I think, um, even if I say so myself. As of tomorrow, maybe this evening, but probably tomorrow, you can come back to the website, the Keith Speaking Academy, and you can check um, on the, the website for the, for the what? For the notes from today's class. And I'm just going to show you very quickly if you want to see where it is just to make sure you know, go to Keith Speaking Academy. And when you go to the, the menu and click on free live lessons, right? That's where you're going to find all of the notes um, from the classes, the live lessons that we do, which are every Thursday. OK, um, if you want to help me and support my work, you can make a donation by clicking here. Um, or you can just go straight on and you can download or watch the lessons from the all the previous lessons are here. Lots of them. Ambition, animals, books, everything that you get, all these topics in IELTS speaking. Lots of free lessons and downloads. Go and check them out. And I hope that they can help you. That's it from me today. Um, I'm off later this evening to do my weekly shop. We need to buy food, which I do enjoy doing, actually. So listen, whatever you're doing this weekend, have a great time. It's been great being with you. Thank you very much for joining me. And I look forward to seeing you very, very soon. Look out on Saturday for the video. More things about shopping. I think you'll like it. Take care, my friends. All the best now. Bye-bye.